So let's go through an example here where we actually have to find the standard deviation where we're given numbers to work with. So we've got to find the population and sample variance and standard deviation of that data right there. So the large circle, the circle on the outside, everything within that large circle represents the population. And then the small circle here represents the sample of that population. So I'm first going to deal with the population as a whole. So all of the data within the large circle. So I'm going to find the variance and standard deviation for the population. And then we'll work with the sample as well. So with the population, everything under the large circle, notice that there are 10 observations. There are 10 data points here for the whole population. If you count all the numbers, the number of them is 10. And the first thing you want to do when you're calculating variance and standard deviation is you want to calculate the mean of the population or the sample. In this case, it's the population. So how do you do that? You would sum up all of the data points. So you would sum up all these numbers. And when you do that, you would end up getting 80. And then there's 10 of them. So we divide by that capital N. We average them out. And so the average is equal to 8. That is the population mean. And so what you do then is you take that population mean, and then you figure out how much each data point is deviating from this mean here. So what we're going to be doing is taking each data point. So let's start with the six here. And then we're going to subtract that mean, that population mean, which is eight in this case. And then what you do is you take that deviation and then we're going to square it. Okay, and then we would take the 18, we're going to subtract 8, we're going to square that. And then we're going to take the 3, I'm going to start with the data points on the outside of the sample. We would take the 3, subtract 8, we're going to square it. Now sometimes certain textbooks, they'll actually show both of these processes in two different columns. So they'll have a column for just the deviations, and then they'll square the deviations in another column. I'm sort of combining them into one step here. So then we'll have 7 minus 8, we're going to square that, and then we would have the 1, and we're going to subtract 8, and then we're going to square that. And then if you fill in the rest of the data points, you would get this list, the data points from the sample. So you'd have 4, 11, 10, 8, and 12. And remember, you got to include the data points from the sample because we're looking at the entire population, which includes the sample. Okay, so once you have this list here, you want to get the actual values now. So 6 minus 8 is negative 2. If we square that, that's going to be positive 4. Then we got 18 minus 8, which is 10. Squared is 100. This is going to be 25. This is going to be 1. This is going to be 49. This is going to be 16, 9, 4, 0, and then 16 again. Okay, and now notice that all of these numbers are positive or zero. Sometimes that will happen if you get a data point that actually equals the uh, mean, then there's no deviation from the mean. But all the other numbers, notice that those deviations, those square deviations are always going to be positive. So now what you want to do is you actually want to sum up those square deviations. And if you sum all these numbers up, you would end up with 224. And then once you're here, you actually have enough information to calculate what that uh, population variance and standard deviation is. And actually, we're going to start off with the variance because I feel like it's on the way, quote unquote, to the standard deviation. So sigma squared, which is the population standard deviation squared, which is the population variance, the formula is the sum of all of these square deviations divided by n. So this here, this numerator, is basically this number that we got. So it's 224 divided by capital N, 10 observations in the sample, or in the population, rather. So we get 224 over 10, which ends up being 22.4. So that there is 
your population variance. And then if we want to get the respective standard deviation, population standard deviation, we would just take that population variance and square root it. And when you do that in your calculator, you get approximately 4.73. Right, so that there is your population standard deviation. And then the 22.4, that is your population variance. So now let's move on to the sample. And the sample is within this small circle here. So if you look at that, notice that the number of observations, or small n in this case, is going to be 5. There's 5 data points in the sample. First thing you want to do when you're calculating the variance and standard deviation for the sample, like we did with the population, you want to find the average. And we're going to find the average of the sample in this case. We're going to represent it as x bar. And x bar in this case, you would sum up the 4, 11, 10, 8, 12. You'd end up getting 45. And then we're going to divide it by the number of observations, 5, average them out. We would end up with 9. So that is the sample mean or the sample average. And then what you want to do, exact same thing that we did before, is you want to take all of the data points and see how much they deviate from that mean. So what we're going to do, we're going to take the 4, we're going to subtract 9, subtracting that mean, then we're going to square that. We're going to take the 11, subtract 9, square that, 10 minus 9, square that, 8 minus 9, square that, and then 12 minus 9. We're going to square that. We're getting the square deviations. And then from here, we'll have 25, 4, 1, 1, 9, like that. And then what you want to do is you want to sum those square deviations up. So we would end up with what? 15 plus 25, which is uh, 40, like that. And then once you have that, the sum of the square deviations, we can go ahead and find, let's first find that uh, sample variance. And the sample variance, we know that it's the sum of those square deviations, put an x bar here, However, we're dividing it by n minus 1. Remember, with a sample variance and a sample standard deviation, as I mentioned in the previous video, we're dividing by n minus 1. So it's basically going to be 40 divided by 5 minus 1. And so that sample variance is going to be 10. Right, so that there is the sample variance. And so the sample standard deviation is just going to be the square root of 10, which would give you approximately 3.16. Right, so that's the sample variance. That is the sample standard deviation. And notice how they compare to the population variance and standard deviation. Notice that they're smaller, right? Because as we mentioned, that variability in the sample is uh, is going to have a downward bias. And notice, even with this correction, right? we did that n minus 1 correction just to bring those numbers up. Notice that they're still not to par of the population. right? They're closer than if we didn't do that. Like if we didn't do the n minus 1 and we just kept it as 5, then the variance would have been what? It would have been 8. And then the um, standard deviation would have been the square root of 8. I think it's like 2.8, something around there. So notice that the variance and the standard deviation would be even lower in that case if we didn't do that correction, which would be even further from the population variance and standard deviation. Right. So we got to do that correction. But as I mentioned in the previous video, even with the correction, still, there's still a bit of a downward bias, right? But anyway, that is the process. That's how I go through calculating manually the variance and the standard deviation for both a population and a sample given a bunch of observations.